What's going on? I'm pretty happy right now. Are you? Why? I see what's in front of us. You see whiskey? But first, the business side? The business side of the business. The business side of the business. All right. So, folks, folks, if you like what you see, subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs down. Tell us if you've had this lovely whiskey. Tell us what you think of it. Tell us what you think of us. We can take it. We're big boys. Just be polite. No profanity, please. This is a family show. That's all we got. All right, let's get down to it. We have the first round of whiskeys from Waterford Distillery in Ireland. In old, the old sod, Sunny yeah. Ireland. The old sod? The old sod. So this was started by Mark Rainier. Rainier? How do we say his name? Basically, he was the guy from Brooklady. Right. He, he, he resurrected Brooklady mm-hmm. from the ashes. It's now the fiery phoenix that it is. And, you know, when they got purchased up, I, don't, I forget who bought them. And then he decided, I'm not done. Nope. I'd like to do something else. I'm going to build a distillery from the ground up. From the ground up. And he put his own spin on it. Because I believe Mark has a background in wine. Mm -hmm. So I think he was bringing those expertise to the table and taking things from a winemaker's perspective. And I think winemakers are very big on terroir. Terroir. Where grapes on this Terrible. side of the road are better than grapes on the other side of the road. I don't know if you can see this, but then we, we got the whiskey in this lovely box. He's put the terroir spin on the whiskey, right? I mean, he's taking this terroir thing very seriously. So what he's done is terroir. He's, he's gone and looked at the grain that goes into the whiskey. Yes. And he's gone and picked grain from special places. Yes. And made a whiskey based on grains from only that place. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. It sounds fascinating. So, now, this I, was brought in by our dear friend um, Raj of Glass of Revolution Imports. And I will pour the very first one, the Multi Farm Organic Gaia 1.1. Sounds good. Now, we don't really know which way to start, so we'll do that one first, and then I think we're just basically going alphabetical. Just go alphabetical. And the name on the bottle, I believe, is the farm where the whiskey come, where the grain came from. So, I'll just read a little bit here. Uh, influenced by the world's greatest winemakers, we obsessively bring the same intellectual drive, methodology, and rigor to single malt whiskey. Terroir. Barley is the source of, of malt whiskey's complex flavors. Those flavors are shaped by the place where the barley grows, by the soils that nourish its roots, by the microclimates in which it ripens. By terroir. Now, there's a whole bunch of stuff here, and you know we can go on for days. But we're going to speed things we'll up. direct you to the website. We'll direct it to the website. If you want, you can go on to Raj's site, theglassrevolution.com, and there's a whole section on Waterford where they break it all down. Um, should I read about this particular whiskey, the uh, Gaia? I'll tell you what the barley growers are off the label. It's okay. Malik, Booth, Stanley, Jackson's, Harris, and Tobin are the multiple growers. This is batch V25075, and the spirit was aged for 1,343 days. Not 45. Nope. Not 42, 43. 43. I like that. I like the, the accuracy. Cask composition, 35% American oak, 20% new American oak, 25% French, and 20% VDN. Huh, interesting. Shall the I ABV of the cask is 72.15, and the sample comes in at 50%. I like that. I respect that. So this is our uh, Overture 2015. That's what they have on the back. Nice. Sir, give us a try. Cheers. Cheers. I'm excited. I'm very excited. Oh, wow. I just S- got a big S- wafer. Spicy. Oof, I just got a, I got one big, like, alcohol right up the right nostril. It went right up there. Just gave me a... You know what I just got? I think it just gave me a COVID you test. You got a COVID test? <laughs> I just got a COVID <laughs> right test. Right up to the brain. Oh, uh, I had one last week. I sneezed. This is... Uh, it smells really nice. I just love the smell of like the, the grassy Irish whiskeys that you get it, and it, it smells so much like the farm. It's just so nice. The heather, you get all that nice flavor to it. Is it like driving through Lancaster County? Is that what you're saying? I don't know about that. <laughs> sure, for you, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Barnyard funk. No, there's none of that. This is just very, very pretty. It very does, very it does, like floral. It does smell hot. Yeah, you got a lot more floral with yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, should I read a little bit about this? You can read a little bit. The Arcadian series represents our otherworldly garden of delights. We sought out maverick farmers, inspirational growers, iconoclasts, whose ethos and way of life respects the land and the old ways in the pursuits of pure flavor over yield imperatives. Gaia, 
the neo-pagan goddess of yore, a personification of Mother Earth herself, is a fitting custodian to bring forth Ireland's first whiskey distilled from certified organic Irish barley. This is a totally natural whiskey with no coloring, chill filtration, or additives whatsoever. So this is about three years and eight months. That's fantastic. I like that. It really does smell great. It really does. I'm going in. Very, very, like, very floral, but also like some light fruits. But it's very full flavored. Yeah. And it's very, it's all up front. I don't think it's that hot. It's got some heat to it, for yeah. sure. I mean, it's definitely like, you know, mouth filling flavor. Like, you get a lot of, like, vapors, wafting. You don't off. get it on the back end. The finish isn't there. No, 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 no. But it, it's very nice. It's a little cereally, a little, like, grainy. Yeah, a little bit grainy. And it's uh, not as maybe sweet or caramely as you would think, but really not as like cinnamony, peppery as you'd think. It's just got a nice, good flavor to it. Very pleasant, very nice. Should we move on? Well, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. let's talk. We've got a couple minutes. We can talk. No, we, can just checking. Checking. we can give these a couple minutes. Come on, I'm now, just man. Just checking. I didn't. That's not rush. I didn't know what you wanted to do next. No, I think we can. We can do this. We can do this. This is this is actually really, really good. I think on the on the nose and in the flavor you get a lot more of the grain profile, which again speaks to possibly the uniqueness of the barley's they're using, the growers that are coming in. It's really really nice though. It's got a nice like again like fruity, grassy, heathery, full, full, full a little cereal. No, really, if you really like good. Irish whiskey, I think you would like this. And I like it better than you know. And a lot of Irish whiskey comes in at a little softer at like the forty percent, forty three percent, something like that. Fifty percent. This is coming in with a little bit of punch to it. It's yeah, nice. no, no, it's, it's good. nice. I like that. All right, so we're going to keep these in order, right? So this will be the first one. That's the Gaia. We're going to do the second one. And now What's this, the second is, one? Uh, this is the Single Farm Dunbell 1.1. The barley grower is Ned Murphy from Kilkenny. Kilkenny. This was aged for 1,365 days, so about the same amount of time. Um, three years, eight months, maybe eight and a half months. Okay. And it is batch V23849. And the cast composition is similar to the other one. Um, they're using 35% American, 20% New American, 25% French, and 20% VDN. So does that mean you think that they're 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 filling a bunch of different casts yeah, and then yeah, they're blending yeah, them together? Yeah, that's my guess. Is they're using like the the uh, uh, Solaris system or whatever it is? Well, like, I don't know. Or maybe they just they age, roll them separately, separately, age them separately, roll and them, then in, they put them, then they put them together them. in some way. Yeah, they vat it. You know, which I think is like my understanding is how winemaking kind of works. Yeah. You know, they'll do different bottle, but different, you know, types of wood or whatever, and then they bring them all together and let them manage. So let me read a little bit. This was Dumbbell. This is the Dumbbell 1.1. Dumbbell 1.1. Made of 100% Irish grown barley, Dumbbell Edition 1.1. I think you said all this. Was uh, grown by Ned Murphy, east of the uh, River Nor in County Kilkenny. Uh, I think you read all this, didn't you? Grower M. Murphy's barley ripens in the shadows of Tullaheron's Round Tower, site of a 5th century monastery where monks converted the, I don't know how you say it, Osrage, Osrach, I don't know, deer people must have favored the deep loamy soils derived from glacial drift of limestone, sandstone, and shale. Sorry, cheers. This is uh, absolutely different. It is. And you know, we got the other one right next to it. So. Absolutely different. This one's a little more subtle. You think they're... It's a little more but, muted? But you wouldn't think they were the same thing. They're two... Yeah, no, they are. Subtly different. Where the, the terroir, with the difference between the growers, one from yeah. Kenny, one from uh, multiple sources, it, it really comes through on the nose. They're at the same ABV. Yeah, this one's... Same casking. This one's a little more muted. I don't think it's as vibrant or fruity as the first one. Not on the nose. I mean, the taste uh, might I'm be getting, so... I'm getting more of the grain. And the... Um, it's not quite as vapory as the, the Gaia. But it's still got a little kick to it, though. Oh, on the nose. Um, just... Yeah. The, 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 I think the Gaia, that was the first note I got. Was This the, one the seemed a little more, like, open. This one's yeah. a little bit, like, a little tight on the a nose. closed. Yeah, a little closed on the nose. A little standoffish. A little you bit. Gotta, you gotta talk to it a little bit, sweet talk it. That's okay, I respect that. Bring out some flavors. I kind of respect that. It's not, like, all in your face. It's... Kind of like feeling out a little bit, like, oh, I don't know, do we like this guy, do we not like this guy? We do not like this guy. Oh, hell no. no I'm sorry, I was guy. going for my own personal part. Oh, they're talking about me. You're talking about me? No, I'm talking about me. Oh, that's all right. We do not like this guy. This guy's a bad guy. Oh, you know, it's starting to open up a little bit. 
I went in. So did I. It is decidedly different in flavor. You know what? It's a little more full. Yeah, decidedly different in flavor. This is more, as you would say, front to back? A little more front to back. Like, that one's all up front. A little bit more of a finish, but still not much of a finish. And it's um, it's almost gritty in a, in this a in is, sort of a way. It's, 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 it's so different. It's not as... That one's more, like, more fruit mm. and more, like, grassy notes and all that kind of stuff. This is more... This is a lot more grainy. Mm-hmm. This one, I could sort of almost get that barley. You know, you could taste the, mm. like, the grain. For lack of a better word. Did I say grain? You said grain. I think I said grain. A little gritty. Again, not uh, not good or bad, just different. Um, I think I like them both. You know, but this has, this is like, like on the finish, it's almost like a little silky. Yeah. yeah. Like it's just really... It's it's two decidedly different whiskeys. It's all, it's... How, how can I put it? How can I put it? It's a, it's a little more subdued. It's a little more chill. You know, this might be like more of a gets gets the palate going. Maybe a start you off. Yeah. You know, but it's got a little bit of smoothness to yeah. it. You know, almost like a Glenmorangie. You know how that is yep. like got yep. a very like yep. refined yep. way about it. You know, sure. that, that's sure. pretty nice. I can see that. That's pretty nice. It's very light. It's almost I like the um, like the original. Very nice. Very approachable. Not anything that's, that's you know off putting no, no, in the flavors. Nice. Um, big fan Irish whiskey, and the first two we've had are awfully nice. And let's remember, how old is this one? About three years and uh, eight and a half That's months. A little bit younger. A little bit older. A little bit older. A little bit older. Okay. Aged about uh, you know, mm. twenty no, days more good. or something. It grew on me. Like yeah. more. Yeah. It got more like, yeah. it, like a little silky. Bit, a little bit more flavor to it. Yeah. And I don't know if you can really get. I the, think the first one was bigger. I don't know if you can really get the color difference. Yeah. There's slightly subtle shades where this is a little bit darker than this one, and maybe a little bit more flavor to it. Okay. A little bit. All right, let's uh, let's go down to the second half of this one. So, which one is this now? This is the Dunmore 1.1. Okay, the Dunmore 1.1. Let me read what's I on there. I will here. pour. You will okay. Made from 100% Irish grown barley, single farm origin, Dunmore edition 1.1. Was grown by John Tynan in County, uh, I don't know, Laos, Laos. Leash. 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 Where the hell do you get leash? I don't know. Jesus Christ. Leash. For God's sake. God's sake, these pronunciations. Leash. At the top of John Tynan's barley. At least Tynan's a nice normal name. There you go. And John. We could say that. Or is it like Yon? <laughs> Just keep reading. God damn pronunciation. Cards and letters. <laughs> Gilo. Hey. Hey. All right. I'm Just going. move on. At the top of John Tynan's barley fields, within a striking circular corpse of trees. Oh, cops of trees. Sorry, not corpse. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. My Sicilian's coming under the out. Trees. My Sicilian's coming out. Is the early medieval fort that lands the townland its name. On Dunmore, uh, the big fort, a reminder of turbulent times of lore. Nestled between the Sleeve or Slive, Slive, Sluve, Blue Mountains, and the Castlecomer Plateau of County Leash, is this westerly facing lowland terroir of limestone derived loamy drift that harbors a compact, gravelly tilth. Again, 50% ABV, and this is. Just slightly under four years. This is uh, 1,447 days, and it's batch V23739. Okay. And the composition of the barrels is the same as the other two, 35% American, 20% New American, 25% French, and 20% VDM. So they've gotten slightly older as we've gone on. Not by so much. Three, eight, <clears throat> three, eight and a half, four. Okay. All right. So, a little bit older. Right. Pretty good. Sir? Cheers. Cheers. It's got a pretty color. It's like a light... Golden color, slightly darker, light slightly younger. darker than the last one. A little bit. So maybe we got the reorder right. Huh? Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. We're just guessing. And the nose is decidedly different than the first two. It is very different. So again, the, the terroir, maybe that really matters. I mean, because if, if if all else, all things being equal, right? I would assume the distillation process is the same. The cast composition is the same. Yeah. So the only variable is the barley. The barley going in, right? Yeah. So everything else. The water is the same. The yeast, maybe I don't. They don't say anything about yeast. So you're gonna boil all the water, so the water's yeah. gonna be exactly the same. So I'm assuming, yeah. and you have to what deionize the water or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's got to be done the same way. So. so, and they're probably using the same yeast strain, right? Yeah. So, so the only real difference is the only be the grains going in, and like you get a single cask, they're using a single grain to go in a single farm. It is very grain. different. I'm yeah. almost getting like a light licorice note, yeah. a little anise, and maybe a little bit of honeysuckle on this yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So different. So different. It's kind of neat. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. And again, this is a little bigger. Whole flavor is different. A little bit more flavor. 
a little bit more finish, a little bit more to the back of the throat than just the teeth. Yeah. A little, maybe a little richer all around. So the first one was very like bright. Yep. Like, just very like in your face. You and know. fruity. A little fruity. <clears throat> the second fruity. one was a little more subtle, yeah. subtle, but like kind of velvety and a yeah. little bit more like, dare I say, elegant? Yes, you may maybe, say. Maybe. This one's got a little bit more oomph yeah. to it. Yeah. And again, they're yeah. all at 50%. Yeah. So there's no oomph difference. No. It's just the it's whole the same. profile is different. Right. And that speaks to the terroir. I very guess. Nice. Maybe this guy's nice. onto something. Well, and as a wine guy, yeah. you know, they're, dis they're decidedly different it's when you go from one valley to another. And I'm not going to say it's, you know, better or worse than other whiskeys we have. It's just a different approach. Yep. Yeah. You know, and, and the end result is you're getting a damn good whiskey. Yeah. You know, for the first time around, this is kind of scary. He's and, on something. And for something that's four years old. At, right. At the biggest, you know. Wait till this is eight years old. And again, it's, it's not going to be. And it's not that they didn't have experience doing yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. just, this is the they stuff. Just, yeah, they just haven't had time. This is out of the box. Yeah, they just haven't had time. That's pretty damn good. Yeah. This is really nice. And and I get a little more sweetness to it. It's a um, little bit more of everything. Like I'm getting a little, like, almost like a little bit of a caramel note. A little more of everything. You know, yeah. like a little bit of caramel yeah. or maybe toffee. Yeah. You know, it's getting a little bit different. And again, the barrels are the same. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit older. So the time in the barrel, it's about three more, four more months. Yeah. But everything else, right, pretty much the same. No, that's nice. So they don't mention the char. So the char could be slightly different on the barrels, mm -hmm. which is going to bring out a slightly different flavor. But Yeah, right, right. But assuming they're using a similar char and a similar everything, the, the whiskeys, uh, they're, they're, they're very different. They really are different. This one's got a lot more sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. a, little, a lot more of everything. This is like almost like dessertish, like this is like your aperitif. Yep. This one maybe is with dinner. This one we might be getting into dessert territory. You know, it's and weird. Then, and then know. hopefully the last one's the nightcap. Hey. And we we've, we've had a whole we've wow. had the whole meal. They're all nightcaps. But we've had the whole meal. Yeah. We've run the whole course. No, this is which one? This is the last one. And this is how do you say it? And uh, I, did a, I, I did it. Wrath claw. <laughs> Ravenclaw, Ravencliff, Wraithclaw, as I, as I think how it's supposed to be pronounced. And I apologize while my counterpart does not. He doesn't care. He <laughs> just doesn't care. So I think it's Wraithclaw. Um, it means uh, f f uh, stone fort or uh, stone ring. Oh, I'll read. But I'll read I will pour. Okay, so this is the Wraithclaw Edition 1.1. Made from 100% Irish bar grown barley, single farm origin. Wraithclaw Edition 1.1 was grown by Richard... Uh, R A F T I C E raft ice raftis raftish. I don't know how you say his name. I'm sorry. My apologies, Richard. The strategic importance of Rathclo Stone Fort on the old Kilkenny to Waterford Road was equally appreciated by the Vikings adjacent Danes Fort or Danis Fort. I don't know. The striking vantage points look over Richard Raftis's. Low-lying land of quick-drying, shallow gravel soils deposited by ancient glacier meltwater, ensuring it an early sowing, ripening ten terroir. Interesting. So it's like a totally different kind of thing. Yep. So it's not like earth. Different, different soil. They actually put the farm's location down with a longitude and latitude for each of the bottles, so you can ah. actually see where they were if you had a map handy. Hey. Um, the barley here is Irina. 2015. Uh, the batch is V23639, and it's aged 1,414 days, which huh. is just under what well, this is aged. Okay. It's about three years, ten and a half months. Interesting. Sir? Cheers. Slanjava! Hmm. Again, a little different than us. Also, 50% ABV. I'm not getting the vapors with this as much either. It's got a little more body to it. Again, I think we mistakenly actually drank these in the right order. Possibly. Not sure how we managed this to do it. This one's a little bigger than the other one. Yeah, I think they've actually built. There's a little more heft. I think the color's a little bit darker. Yeah, this one's this one's like, it's like a little grainy. Then there's like a little bit of caramel, and then I'm getting like a like a like a tobacco or like a leather. Yeah, a little bit of leather and a little bit more of the like the peppery nuts. There's uh -huh. a little bit more heat. Ah, to it. I didn't get that. A little, just a little. Now again, not a lot. Just a little bit more than the other ones. And I think there's a lot more of a finish. It's a little bigger, a little bolder. This is also up front. But it's also getting like right here, right under my front lip, like mm -hmm. the back, like in front of my teeth. It's it's just it's there. Gotta chew your whiskey. Ah, chew it. Chew my whiskey. I just gotta say wow for the four of them. 
That is that, some pretty impressive stuff. That is, uh, again, for the limited amount of time they've been in business. Right. They've put out four fantastic expressions, four decidedly different yeah. expressions. Um, and again, the only difference that we can see is they've pinpointed exactly where the barley's from. You've seen Jurassic Park, right? And it's, <laughs> that's, I've seen Jurassic Park. <laughs> you know the whole thing with Richard Attenborough? I don't even want to and, know where no. this is headed. <laughs> Just the thing he says in the beginning, <laughs> oh, spend no expense. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, based again upon all, I mean, there's a lot of money. There's, there's a lot of um, capital involved in this project. And as far as I know, they haven't brought out, you know, they haven't sold a vodka or a gin or anything. They just went whole hog on this. The three here are all the same barley strain. Okay. Just Arena different 2015, farms. just from different locations. Huh. So again, the terroir that some people don't believe, some people maybe, believe. Maybe, I don't know. I it, think it's, it's awesome. it, If the barreling is exactly the same. Right. The distilling exactly the same. Uh -huh. The water source exactly the same. Right. The only difference is... Where you got the barley from. Yeah. Growing it on these different fields with the different soil consistencies, it puts out mm -hmm. decidedly different whiskey. Now the question is, can I pick a winner out of these? No, I think they're just completely different. I think they're all, they honestly, and, and you know. They're like your children, is, you can't pick a winner. No, but I mean, here's the thing, okay? Again, I've said this many times, but we're not consumer reports. There was no like, you know, let's, let's take it for a test drive, let's do a long-term test. This is first impressions, and first impressions are pretty goddamn excellent. If I had to go and pick a favorite, mm -hmm. I would probably say this one. Mm. Because the flavors were big but not that bold. Yeah. Um, I thought they built, and this one has decidedly far more flavor than the other two, the right. other three do. Mm -hmm. But I think I like this one the best. Again, you're splitting hairs here at this point. Yeah, there's, there's no. no real difference. But, but, but I'm amazed but I think, at how I think different I like they are. One. Yeah, I think I like that one the best. They're really, they're a lot of fun. They're, they really are a lot of fun. And this was very interesting as, the, again, we just lined them up and yeah. started pouring them. Mm -hmm. um, this really has a, like a very nice, fresh, approachable flavor yeah. to it. It's very nice. And again, the fact that they're all 50% ABV, you don't get that either. Like they don't all seem like they're the same ABV because the flavors are so different. It's not the alcohol that's really flavored them. It's the, the actual grains that are flavored. Right, right. Huh. I, if this I is their it. first effort, my God, I, I can't wait to see I, effort number two, I three, and four. This is, this is great. And what I'm really liking is we've got more than enough to go back and try these again. Mm -hmm. I, I dig it. And I'd like to try a cocktail. Ah, uh, no. Like try no, I'm not doing that. I'd like to try a cocktail. I'm not doing that. They I say that because you make cocktails for me because I'm too lazy to have yeah, ingredients for cocktails. Yeah, but you know, to be honest, I don't know. I'm thinking these are, these are just on their own. Come on, you make a mule out of this? No. Why would I do that? Come on. No. No. Find that. No, we got to, no. See, the thing is, I'll these, make my own mule. I'll make your own mule. <laughs> yeah, you get, you, you know. You get out. And the mule you wrote it on. <laughs> get out. That, you son of a bitch. So, anyhow, um, I'm going like, I'm going B plus to A minus nah, across I'd, the I'd board. Say, I'd say B pluses for everybody. This is, I mean, for out of, out of the box? 80, 89s for all of them. How's this? He stepped up to the plate. He swung for the fences. And I'm thinking he got like a inside of the park home run. This is he didn't a, quake it over the fence yet. This is a great effort. He tripled. Yeah. It's a triple. He got a triple. If he's speedy, he made it all the way around. Is that around. a thing inside the made park? Made it all the way around. Sure. I don't want to get my, That's my, my sports metaphors Your sports wrong. metaphors all wrong? Yeah, because I'm, I'm He high. swung for the fences and got a touchdown. Hey. <laughs> Go! He got, you know what he got? He got a three-pointer, three and he got fouled on the three-pointer, <laughs> made the shot, and won. And, and won. And won. And won. Um, really, really great effort and really enjoyed. Um, again, I'm a huge fan of Irish whiskey, so I'm yeah. somewhat biased. No, this is nice. But this is really good Irish whiskey. I, I really, really good. enjoyed this. I love really the label. Love the bottle. Love the story. Everything about it. So, so all right. So, cheers to cheers Mark. Cheers to, to Mark. Cheers, cheers to, to Mark Brignac. Cheers, cheers to our good friend, Raj. Cheers to Raj for bringing it in. Yeah. Cheers to us for getting four bottles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? Cheers to all these farmers. Yep. Because you know what? They're doing God's work. They are. They are. Cheers to them. Cheers to them. Thanks, folks. Cheers.